Hey everybody, so this is, um, I was working on 7.4, this is an introduction to what we're talking about, and this is a big deal um, in terms of understanding how we're moving forward, understanding this initial assignment, 7.4, is going to be critical. Um, and so, the first thing we need to understand is that there are questions like 10 to the x equals 100 that, that you know, we want to be able to solve, and some of them we can solve. For instance, 10 to what exponent equals 100? Well, most of us can reason through the fact that x must be 2 because 10 to the second power, that's 10 times 10, is 100. So that's actually pretty handy. We can do that. But if I want 10 to the x to be something like 30, well, I know that 10 to the first is 10, and I know that 10 to the second is 100. So to get 30, I've got to be somewhere between 1 and 2 as an exponent. Well, shoot, what is it, 10 to the 1.5? Is it 10 to the 1.1? 10 to the 1.153? Like, there, what exactly is going to produce that 30? It turns out these problems are actually pretty hard to solve by hand. It takes a lot of guessing and checking, using our calculator to evaluate these different exponents and seeing what we get. For instance, if I take my calculator and I do 10 raised to the 1.5, it's not going to give me 50. It gives me 31. I'm actually pretty close with that. Maybe 10 to the 1 point, it's too big, so 1.45. Well, that's too small now. And I keep guessing back and forth, going higher and lower and higher and lower, trying to find these solutions. But this will take a long time. So mathematicians worked a long time to create some other type of mathematics that would produce solutions to these, or a different way to ask the question um, and how to solve this. And the idea that was created is what's called a logarithm. You can think of an algorithm or arithmetic, but it's a logarithm. Okay, And a logarithm is defined as such. If you can find something that follows the format, b raised to the x equals y. This is called an exponential function. Then it can be rewritten in logarithmic form. Where we write logarithm, we're going to have to give a subscript. Think of H2O when you write stuff like you know, H2O. That subscript right there, that's the kind of thing we have to write in this logarithm. The subscript will be the same number as the base of the exponent of y equals x. Now the key idea here is that when I don't know the exponent, this logarithm will equal that exponent. So it gives me something that, is, that I can manipulate and work with. And so if we look at an example like the one we had, 10 to the x equals 30, I could rewrite that as the log base 10 of 30 equals x. You can see how each thing, right, so who's in the y position? 30 is. So who's in the y position? 30 is. And we can see how everybody's just rearranged and followed that pattern. This is something that we can evaluate with a calculator. And then we know our answer. Now I, I know how to put this in the calculator correctly and we'll talk a little bit about it in your homework help, but if I take the log of 30, and again the whole base 10 thing, it's in there. Again, we'll talk about it later. It's 1.477, which is a little bit less than 1.5 like we thought. Um, now, if I take 10 and I raise it to this new number as an exponent, okay? See how I just made that number my exponent? And I press Enter, I get 30. Now, there's going to be some rounding error because it can only go out so far, but that's pretty dang good. We figured out the decimal that makes 10 turn into 30 very, very quickly and efficiently. So logarithms are asking what exponent do you put on the base, this number here, to produce that number there. Okay, That's what a logarithm is asking. It's asking for an exponent. Okay, So when we're looking for exponents, logarithms are a great way to solve. All right, let's uh, make a little bit more room here if I can. Maybe I can't. There we go. So the other things that you need to understand about logarithms is that there are two basic types of logarithms that are calculator friendly. Okay, 
The first log is what's called the common log. Log base 10 of x. We'll say something like that. Common log. So the reason it's called a common log is because we're using the base 10. Anytime we use base 10, we can get a little bit lazy and just write log of x. So when there's no number written in that base position, we can assume that it's 10. That means on our calculator, when I pressed log and there was no base written, it was okay because I was doing a base 10 problem. But a base 2 or base 5 problem can't be done using our common log button. Not, not, we'll figure out some ways around that um, eventually, but for now, it doesn't work. All right, the other type of log is called the natural log. And that is represented by either a capital LN or sometimes we'll use a script LN. The book will often use LN like this, and you could do it, but man, this L looks a lot like a 1. If I were handwriting, I would avoid doing that completely. We use LN or a, um, a cursive or script LN. It's right here on the calculator. And the LN is a very specific base. So when we say LN, what we mean is log with a base of E. So if I said the log of, or the LN of X, I mean log base E of X. Again, Euler's number, E, was a special number it has a lot of significance in mathematics and in modeling the natural world. Because of that, we want to take and, and have a special case for it. So whenever we're talking about E problems, we're going to talk about the natural log, LN. If we see an LN, we know that it's really a base E problem. And everything else will have its base written out. These two don't have to have their base written out because they're special cases. Uh, they're like celebrities of the logarithm world. They get their own rules. Um, other stuff that you need to understand fundamentally is that an exponential and logarithms are inverses. So what that fundamentally means is that if you have the log base, say, 3 of 3 squared. Okay, so do you see how we have this exponential piece? Actually, let's just put an x here. Put an x there just to make it a little bit simpler to look at. So we have this exponential, 3 to the x but it's inside of a logarithm with the same base. If the bases, whoops, if the bases match in our logarithm, then they will cancel the logarithm out and all that we're left with is x. The same can be said in reverse. What if we put a logarithm inside of an exponential? So an exponential would look like 7 to the x, right? So that's the idea. But instead of putting an x, what if we wrote log base 7 of x? Something like this. Do You see how 7 and the log base 7, they're built inside of each other. The 7's exponent is a logarithm. Well, that's, they're inverses to one another, so this would also lead to cancellation, and our answer would just be x. They won't always be x, sometimes it'll be a number, uh, things like that. I mean, if I had 3 to the log base 3 of 5, these cancel, my answer is 5. It's just whatever's in that position, okay? So there's a lot going on. Um, biggest thing is making sure you understand what a logarithm is, how to build it, and then um, how to transfer. So the last thing that we need to talk about, because these are inverses, okay, if I have something like, let me change colors, say I have something like 3 to the x equals uh, 10. Let's say that I want to evaluate this. I want to solve for x. Well, for me to do that, I need to be able to get the x out of the exponent. To get rid of this exponential structure, I need to use a logarithm. So I'm going to apply a logarithm on both sides. Oops. But I need a base for these logarithms. Because the base of my exponent is 3, I'm going to use a base 3 on both sides. See, a base 3 is going to wipe out that 3. So that log is going to clear out this side and leave me with x equals log base 3 of 10. Now that's, again, something we'll learn how to put in the calculator, but that's the process we want to get comfortable with today. And in reverse, if I start with a logarithm, say I have log base, well, actually, you know what? Let's do ln. 
ln is a log base e of say x equals 13. In order for me to get rid of this, and I'm going to go ahead and write the little e here. Normally we don't write it, but I just want to remind you why we're doing what we're going to do. This is a logarithm, and in order for me to cancel logarithm, I need to introduce an exponential structure to it. So think of it like you're moving a house. The actual house is going to physically move. First thing we're going to do is we're going to jack it up on, tilt, on, on stilts. We're going to put it up so we can put wheels underneath it to then move it. So we're jacking the whole thing up to become exponents to our base. So because this is base e, I'm going to raise e to, on the right, it'll be e to the 13th. On the left, it'll be e to the ln of e uh, of x. So what that does is it allows me to cancel the ln and get x equals e to the 13th. Now I know there's a lot going on. This is a lot of new stuff. It's brand new. It's a longer video for these introductions, but there is a lot going on. Uh, this is something you're going to have to spend time with asking questions, getting confused, and then resolving that by getting help when you need it, okay? Good luck, guys. I'll see you in class. Um, man, logarithms, they're a big deal. We use them as a basis of measuring a lot of stuff that's not in a straight line. All right, good luck. We'll see you.